screen right okay. Okay. hola me llamo clara craig Estoy muy feliz. Hello, I'm Clara Craig. I am so happy to be here with you today in Panama. That's the extent of my Spanish. So I uh, thank you all for inviting us to present our uh, this system that we are working on in the in Karimnog. Before I begin, I just want to do like Carlos and give you a little story. A few years ago, I was at a Karimnog meeting, and at that meeting, I was presenting on some data from the Caribbean and internet exchange points in the region. And I was saying at that meeting that one of the issues with Caribbean data on internet exchange points is that the data is anecdotal, which is that it's in somebody's head and you have to know who that person is to be able to find the information. Sorry, I didn't turn my timer on. I should do that. And so I said, for instance, I was looking at the two our main IXP directories, which is PCH directory and peering DB, and the information on both directories about the number of internet exchange points in Trinidad and Tobago was different. And one of them said that there was one internet exchange point, and the other one said that there were two internet exchange points. So I said, but we all know that there is only one internet exchange point in Trinidad and Tobago. And I looked at my esteemed colleagues who agreed with me. And a young man in the audience put his hand up and walked to the, state, to the microphone and said, no, there are two internet exchange points in Trinidad and Tobago, and I implemented the second one. So that proves that the data was anecdotal. So moving forward, that gave us the idea that we needed to do something to ensure that we had more reliable data, and we began working on the Carib IX uh, directory, traffic, IXP directory and traffic monitoring system. The team comprised of Stephen Lee, who is unable to they were both Stephen and Brent were unable to be here today, either in person or online, and so I'm doing this solo. Uh, but Stephen is the co-founder and program director of Caribnog. He's also the CEO of Architects, and he is a network engineer and software engineer by training with extensive experience. Brent McIntosh is the CTO of MacNet Solutions. He's an IXP and an IPv6 evangelist. And he also has a, quite a few number of years experience in the field. And ha they both have implemented most of the internet exchange points in the region. And me, in our country, we say I'm the journey come lately. 
I uh, came on the scene hearing the things that these guys have been working on. I'm a systems analyst by training and decided that there was a need to do research on internet exchange points so that we could have good data to back it up. So what was the aim of this project? We started this project, and as I said, part of it was really to keep our IX and traffic information accurate and up to date, and to share that information with the world to improve decision making. And by that we mean that we did not want the information to be anecdotal, and we wanted the information to be publicly available to anyone who needed to have access to it, especially researchers and other countries that were looking to implement internet exchange points in the region particularly, because we have unique experiences there. So, I have here the outcome, while this is a work in progress, these are, this is what we have done. So the Caribbean repository automatically and manually collects multi-country data from IXPs operating in the region. So by automatically, it means that we work with the internet exchange points and we get them to provide us with links directly to their networks so that we can have that data in real time. And I will show it to you shortly. Manually, we also uh, reach out and find the data that exists in person's heads to get the information that is needed. The approach that we used were well-defined frameworks for publishing the statistics and we share the data with existing repositories. So that means that we did not want to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> Instead, we used tools such as uh, IXP Manager. However, if IXP Manager is not available, we, work, we have workarounds to work with the um, IXPs based on whatever tool they use. What we have found, though, is that the newer IXs, the tools, uh, they, it's easier to, for them to come on board using because they, they start off with IXP Manager, so it's easy to get the data that we need. So I said we manually collect the data and we keep collecting the data on the IXs, whether in operation or in development. So from the time we, we know that an IX is being formed, we begin to work with them to manage their data and ensure that the data is in the format that it should be for ease of disseminating. We also have online forms on our website, we do surveys, interviews, and we use social media to try to capture some of that data. I also said that we automatically collect data from the IXs that are operating. So those, especially the newer ones that are operating, we reach out to them and you will see as I show in the, the links that I show you how we get that data. So there are, as I said, standard um, network traffic in Monica, sorry, standard network traffic monitoring mechanisms are used to capture that data using a standardized schema so that we build with open data that is interoperable with that in mind from the very start so that we don't get to the end of the project and realize or get to the end of uh, working with a client and realize that we can't go any further. So from the very start, we introduce them to the tools that we will be using. So again, IXP Manager instance, it's hosted on secure dual stack networks that are supported by both IPv4 and IPv with IPv4 and IPv6 access. The Carib IXP directory servers connect to remote IXP management networks over IPv6, which are secure tunnels. Now, I know all of you out there 
understand all of this about IPv6 and secure tunnels. These are Brent's and uh, Stephen's domain, so I won't even pretend to try to answer any questions on those. But if you do have questions, you can refer them to Brent and Stephen. But in the maps that I will show you, would you get an understanding of how this is done? We actually host right now on the GREX, which is the Grenada Internet Exchange, and we have plans to to expand these onto other IXPs so that there will be redundancy and um, availability of these networks. And we also use the simple network management protocol, SNMP, to pull and utilize graphs for the remote IXPs, and you will see that shortly. So this is, right, this is the schema of the way the IXP um, directory and traffic monitoring system is set up. So we have IXP manager and there's another tool that we've just introduced, which is the, A, the AL, ALA tech, which provides um, notifications currently just to the administrators, but we plan to, to provide these to the IXPs that are connected. There's the firewall, Karibnog, um, and the IXP firewall, and then the edge. Um, this is for the redundancy, and as you will see over here, can you see my... No, you can't. There is the, the GREX, which is the Grenada Internet Exchange, and it connects to the Smart IX, which is the St. Martin on the French side IXP, and St. Bart's IXP. This is just an example of the connection. This is not the total um, view. And on the other side, you would see there is the Trinidad and Tobago Internet Exchange, the St. Kitts Internet Exchange, and the Suriname Internet Exchange. And you see the internet um, the SNMP remote management tools, which captures the information on the internet. These are basically the internet exchange points in the region. The ones in green are basically the ones that are fully connected. So that's TTIX2, which was the second internet exchange in Trinidad and Tobago, Suriname, Haiti, St. Bart's, St. Martin, and Grenada. You'd see that there are some in a lighter green, so those are in progress, more closer to being uh, integrated. Then there are some in peach or, 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 or pink, I don't know how it's showing up for you, which are also in progress. And the ones in gray are the ones that we are still working with to get them connected to the exchange, and those include one of our close collaborative colleagues who we're working with right now, AMSEX, also um, St. Lucia, the, OXI, the OCIX, which is St. Martin in uh, Dutch St. Martin, as well as Belize. So these are the IXs that we are currently working with to get connected. Now, let me just give you a quick view of the website. So this is the website that where all the data is stored. Then we also have, you could go directly to the directory, to the statistics, and there is also a hub where we provide information such as um, articles or recent events and different things so that persons can have access to what is taking place in the region. I'm trying to get the website open. Right, yes. So this is what the website looks like. Um, the Caribbean Internet Exchange Points. And we have the home page, which provides you with data about you know, what you can expect to find about the initiative. And this is, I'll go straight to the directory in the interest of time. And in the directory, what we wanted to provide, this is information that was not readily available before this started. Oh, I failed to say something at the beginning. <clears throat> this information, this directory, was supported by a FRIDA grant. So when we realized that we needed to do this, we reached out to FRIDA in 2021 and 
completed a proposal to which Frida agreed and gave us a grant to do this. So prior to that, this information would only have been available if we knew someone at any of these internet exchange points. So now we have contact information as far as possible. You'd see that it's a work in progress because for some of them we still don't have the contact information. We have the websites so that persons can go to the website and find out more about the specific internet exchange point. In addition, we have um, the traffic monitor, monitor the traffic statistics for the individual internet exchange point. And again, that, okay, it has disappeared. Oh, so these are, these are the statistics for a specific, let me just go back a bit, sorry. So for instance, if I wanted to know what the statistics, the traffic statistics were for Grenada, if I clicked on this, it, took, it will take me straight to the Grenada traffic statistics. So there I can see what is the traffic by the day, by the week, by the month, and by the year. And this, provide, this is information based on each individual um, IXP for which we have a link. In addition, we also have, right, so we also have the peering DB information for in, as well. Because as I said at the beginning, what we found was that the information on PCH and peering DB was very different. And so we have encouraged our new members to ensure that they are registered on peering DB. Because again, if you look at the information again for the Grenada IX, you would see there is a lot more information. It provides who are the parties that are peering, what are their AS numbers, what speed is being um, used, how, what, what's the policy for the particular um, peer, whether it's selective or it's open, so those kinds of things. And in addition, you would find information on the, uh, the, um, e the website, traffic statistics, and a lot, as well as contact information with a telephone number. So we have found this to be a lot more um, friendly and available for our for, for the persons who need to have access to this. So in the, the last thing I wanted to show you was the hub, um, and that's, we still have to do some work in updating the hub, but here again, you would see that the hub has, as I indicated, information on um, different articles, some of the, events that have taken place and different things that are going on in the region to, and we expect to provide more information to our um, end users and to researchers in particular. So moving along, just this is exactly what I would have shown you before if I wasn't able to get on the sites. So what were some of the lessons learned? We found out that um, there was a lack of defined and dedicated resources. So as you would have seen, the team is, you know, there are mainly three persons. There are other people who worked with us. But since these are very busy people, to get this going with them, we need to get a, a lot more resources to make this happen in a shorter space of time. We found that it was easier to work with the newer IXPs because we could start them from scratch with what needed to happen. And we found that it was really important to have strategic partnerships. In the areas that we had partners, we found as again, like Frida, we got the funding to do what we needed to do and where the IXPs were on board, the, we got the information a lot faster than where we had to be um, encouraging them to collaborate with us. What are our next steps? We think at this time we need to do an assessment, a full assessment of the Caribbean IXP landscape. We need also to identify more strategic partners and champions in the region. And the biggest one of all is to seek funding. So that's it, and right. So I wanted to leave you with this. 
two main events. We have three, two Karabnog events a year. We recently completed Karabnog 27, which was co-hosted with Aaron in Barbados, and that was the 17th to the 19th of April. And our second Karabnog event is in September 18th to 20th, and that's in the LAC region in Curacao. During that time, we will also be hosting CARPIF 10, and at that event, we expect to engage more of our collaborative partners to be able to, to advance the, spe the, the peering and um, internet IXP uh, operations in the region. So with that, I say thank you and any questions. Muchas gracias, Claire. Preguntas. Thank you, Claire. Are there any questions? Remember to state your name. Go ahead. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Thank you very much, Claire. This is Rodney Taylor from the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Um, you mentioned in your I think it was your last or second last slide, the need for funding. And uh, I know the CTU has been working with Karim Nog and with you um, in terms of deploying IXPs in the region. And my question in terms of the need for funding, uh, how does it compare with the other uh, more developed regions? Um, to what extent should these IXPs be self-sustaining? because the uh, internet service providers are actually saving significant uh, money, and in particular foreign exchange, in not routing the traffic that is meant to be local um, internationally, so they're saving on those transit costs. To what extent do you see that the, the model is sustainable, where that you do not need to seek external funding but that um, the operators who benefit from these internet exchange points are able to finance the deployment and management and the further development of the IXPs. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that question, Rodney. And the CTU is one of our collaborative partners. We have implemented internet exchange points with them across the Caribbean. One of the things that we found in our research was that even our model for, for creating internet exchanges is different from the larger uh, markets. So, for instance, in the U.S. and the uh, U.S. market particularly, you, you will not have to go out and try to convince countries, well, not countries, you would not have to try to convince internet exchange, internet service providers of the need for an internet exchange point. It is commercially viable and they reach out to each other because they see benefit in it. In our region, because of our small markets, our service providers are reluctant to, to peer. In addition, even convincing them to peer takes time. And in most instances, as a matter of fact, one of the more successful internet exchange points in the Caribbean, which is the AM6 uh, internet exchange, and I think Nico might be here, they, they installed the internet, the fabric of an internet exchange point with funding from the regulator and then the IXPs joined. So what we have found in the region is that you need the support of government and regulators to begin with the seed funding. And then sometimes you need to get additional funding to make this happen. So we have seen where IXPs have been funding. And after a while, if the government doesn't continue to put money into it, then nothing happens with those IXPs. So that's why we consistently say that there is a need for funding. I hope that answered your question. Thank you for your question. Bueno, no tenemos preguntas de, en línea. Así que muchas gracias, Claire. Damos un aplauso.